Hey everyone, Joe Previtt here, open source developer advocate here at Facebook. Today, we're gonna to be doing an AMA. So I'm gonna go through and answer some of the questions that you all asked on Twitter and other social media platforms. All right, so first question we have, how did you get started in the tech industry? This is a good one. So let's see. It all started a few years ago when I was actually doing a master's in Italian linguistics. I was, you know, originally on a path where I thought I was going to go into academia and teach foreign languages. And when I was on that path, uh, I realized it w might not have been the best path for me. So what I did is I started looking at other paths and that's what led me to the tech industry. So I saw an opportunity there I saw a growing market, and I happened to stumble upon Free Code Camp, which if you're not familiar, it's a free open source curriculum. It teaches JavaScript front end and back end full stack. You build projects, you learn, and it has an awesome community. And so I found that, and I started coding. I did 100 days of code, uh, hashtag 100 days of code. If you're not familiar, you can find it on Twitter to see if I would really like it. And after the first month, I was hooked. I was like, I love building, I love solving problems with tech. This is what I wanna do. And so that's what I did, and that's kind of how I got into tech, at least how I learned how to code. And from there, it started off with an internship to a job, to another job, to another job, to eventually this job here at Facebook working as an open source developer advocate. So that's kind of how I got started in tech. So let's move on to the next question. Next up we have, which kind of sounds like the next leg in the journey. What was your journey like becoming a developer advocate? So this one, so the first time I heard about a developer advocate and the role was actually through Twilio. I had a friend uh, named Greg um, and he became my friend through some different interactions. So. Essentially what happened, I was running a Twilio workshop, needed some help, reached out to them on Twitter. Ended up meeting Greg, finding out that he was a developer evangelist. And I was like, never heard of that, what is that? And so he took some time, we hopped on a video call and he kind of walked me through what it was to be a developer evangelist. And the way that he explained it really resonated with me. He said it's someone who can write code, so solve problems with code, someone who can explain code, so write about code, maybe through blog posts, tutorials, teaching, that kind of thing. And then someone who can talk about code. So whether that's at a meetup or a conference, going up on stage and delivering presentations and technical, explaining technical concepts to people who are both technical and non-technical. And it kind of sounded like an awesome trifecta. And that's, that's where I got hooked. And I said, okay, this is something that I think I wanna do one day. And I had been keeping my eye out for different roles and I had applied here and there and had some accept, some offers and some rejections and nothing that really panned out until, um, until it was October of last year of 2019 where I was at a conference called All Things Open, all about open source. And there I went to a presentation by one of my now coworkers, Kami Williams, who talked about what it was like to be a developer advocate. And afterwards, I ended up chatting with her, asking if there were any open opportunities. She said, yes, we exchanged information. I applied and a few months later, ended up here in Seattle, working on the team, working alongside her and uh, awesome other coworkers. So yeah, that's kind of how I got into developer advocacy. The next question we have is, what was the first open source project you contributed to? The first open source project that I contributed to was a project called Habitica. So if you haven't heard of Habitica, go check it out. It's a gamified task manager. So think of taking your average to-do list and gamifying it. So 
having XP, having health points, having levels, badges, equipment, armor, anything that you can think of. Take all that, the game aspects, and then put it on top of that to-do list, and you have Habitica. So Habitica, one thing that I love is they have an awesome kind of like fan wiki, and within it, they have this awesome guide which walks you through how to get their project set up locally and how you can get started contributing. And within the app, they have these guilds, and so they have a guild, I, I believe it's called Blacksmiths, and so it's for people who want to contribute, either through code or, or other different types of contributions. And so me and a few other friends, when I was doing 100 Days of Code, I met them uh, through another online community. We said, hey, we want to contribute to open source. We were all using Habitica, and so we we're like, okay, let's see if we can contribute to this. And we got a little bit of help and guidance within the guild. We tackled an issue. It took about three weeks or so, you know, a few hours, figuring out the code base, getting things set up locally, figuring out where to look to solve the issue. And the thing that we ended up solving was actually just a, a small bug where emojis weren't being rendered properly in a specific part of the app. And through looking at pull requests and commits and just kind of talking through it with each other, we ended up finding the bug, finding the fix, submitting a pull request and getting it merged in. And so that was, that was my first open source uh, contribution. So I think, I think we have time for one more, which is how does one get involved in open source communities? So there's lots of different ways to get involved depending on the community. I can speak from my own perspective and share what's worked for me. The most recent open source community that I've been involved in has been within the Rust community. So in the Rust community, um, one of the really cool things that they have is this different labeling system. So labels in terms of what you use on GitHub issues to identify it as a bug, a feature, etc. One of the labels that they have is called E, so a capital E dash mentor. And what that means is someone, maybe within the Rust community, maybe the person that filed the issue, knows what's wrong or how this needs to be implemented. But instead of taking it on themselves, they've added this label saying, hey, I know how to fix it. I'm willing to coach or mentor someone who wants to fix it. And so the where I got involved was, you know, I took a look at all of the repos within the Rust GitHub organization. And one of them that I found uh, was Rustdoc. And so it was a book uh, written about Rustdoc, which is essentially a tool that's used within the Rust ecosystem around documentation. So I found this issue, it was super old. Uh, I saw the eMentor label, I left a comment, and I started contributing. And so that's how I got involved. I didn't have a ton of Rust experience. I had maybe a month under my belt. So you don't need to necessarily have a lot of experience to get involved in one of these communities. You really just have to have the motivation and the willingness to get uncomfortable and step out of your comfort zone and maybe get help from other people. So there's, there's lots of different ways. That's one example. But again, you know, if you want to get involved, really it's a matter of stepping into the community, becoming familiar with the ecosystem, becoming familiar with the technologies, and then just kind of like raising your hand and saying, hey, I'm interested in helping. And so whether you're raising your hand within a Discord group, on Spectrum, on Slack, or if it's just on a GitHub issue saying, hey, I'd like to take a stab at this. So that's, that's my advice for how one can get involved in different open source communities. So I think that's all the time that we have for today. Thank you to all of you who've asked these awesome questions. It was really nice chatting with you, and I hope to see you around. Cheers.